بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Shame on those who speak ill of the religion of Islam who make cartoons of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and shame on those who abuse the concept the ideology which supports free speech because free speech as with any right so-called right comes with responsibilities this is the opposite of the system which supports anarchy or the lack of system and all these other false all the ideologies you have to have responsibility with whatever type of freedom you you have freedom is never true freedom or better yet it's better to say perhaps that the concept of true freedom comes with responsibility that's not real freedom that's not real freedom to be irresponsible and then begin to reflect on the consequences after something has happened what I'm referring to is this recent case with the vicious slanderous an evil portrayal of the Prophet Muhammad Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam this is a type of evil and under the banner and guise the false banner and guise of freedom of expression I'm from America I am aware of the constitutional right and I believe in exercising my freedom but again freedom has restrictions true freedom actually is not unrestricted and that is only from a point of that is supported by intelligence the aqal the intellect and it's supported by what is a historical perspective through history and it's supported by of course more importantly for us the Islamic perspective because Islam we are restricted in everything we do by Rabbil Alameen, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth. So we're responsible for what, we're, what we say. We'll be responsible in this life as well as the hereafter. And as Muslims, we are disheartened and we are upset. And in fact, you'll see around the Muslim world, people are enraged at this recent portrayal of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a muslim we cannot speak ill about Jesus alayhi salatu wasallam because Jesus was a prophet and messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam any person who claims to be a muslim who speaks about Jesus alayhi salatu wasallam in an ill way is not a muslim they've left islam so we don't give them the rights of even being a believer in islam and the same goes with the person who speaks about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Adam or Moses or Abraham or any of the Prophets Alayhim Afdal Salatu Wasallam May peace and blessings be upon all of them What I want to bring up for the perspective of those people who are non-Muslims or not the perspective but what I want to say is advice for them is that if you are not a Muslim, we're, no one forces anyone to be anything. Everyone chooses what he or ensure, he uh, w wishes to follow as a faith or not faith, rejecting faith totally. That's on you and that's between you and Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth. And as a Muslim, I believe you'll be held responsible, uh, to uh, held accountable for the belief that you hold. And if you do not submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then in the hereafter, you will be one of the khasirin. You will be of those people who inhabit the hellfire forever. This is what I believe as a Muslim. But I don't enforce my belief upon uh, anyone. And my advice is this, is that we should be responsible. Can, I, I have never been able to deduce on my own, nor have I had anyone articulate to me the mentality of the person who would make such a film or make these cartoon characters they say it's under the guise of freedom ex of expression okay freedom of expression 
But however, from a point, the, the point of logic, do you not think this would anger the people of that particular faith? If I were to criticize the Sikhs, then I've got to be able to stand my ground and understand fully that they are going to be upset with what I have to say. So wouldn't it be better that I refrain from that? I may not agree with them. I may not like their belief. I may speak about it in a logically based way and challenge them or even invite them to Islam. But I'm not going to slander and curse their, their or, or portray their leader in a, uh, uh, or the people, they, the one they worship in, a, uh, in an evil uh, way or character because I'm not ready to face those consequences. So you have to ask yourself, are you ready to face those consequences? Historically, we see the, the backfall when you speak about those holy people and the people of faiths. And we've seen this in, in recent times when even uh, Salman Rushdie is one, uh, Ayan Hursi is another, uh, the many other people who are apostates or people who, who hate Islam, they have had to go into hiding, they've had people make death threats on them, and we're not condoning these death threats, nor are we threatening them. But we're just saying from a point of logic, do you think the people are going to pat you on the back when you speak about the people, you speak about Allah, the creator of the heavens and earth, and you speak about the people he sent, the messengers, alayhim afdal salat wa salam? Do you think you're going to get a pat on the back for that? And a, a, a good job Joe on the, on the side of your cheek? That's, that's just not the way world history has, has, has um, the, that history has, has shown itself to be, nor is it a way even in recent history that people like Solomon and Rushdie have to live their life in hiding and get asylum in, Brit in Britain and have to have bodyguards and so forth. And they have a rise to fame because they slander and, and, and belittle Islam. It is as if, if someone were to come and slap your mother or speak ill of your mother, can they expect to have a pat on the back and a good hug that, and then you whisper in their ear and say, can't we all get along? Is that what you believe? So my advice to the people who do these things is refrain from doing it, Aslan. Is go do, sp spend your, your so-called talents on something else. Make your videos and your films and your cartoons about something, at least even that, if, if nothing else, that will be beneficial. Something that would be beneficial and possibly even cause unity amongst hum humankind. But if not, at least refrain from speaking about Islam and the prophets of Islam. Alayhim afdal salatu wa salam. My advice to the Muslims is, is not to get so excited. We all experience hurt and we experience anger about this kind of evil. Why would someone actually take out time in their life to speak ill about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? We can't understand that. Because we, as a Muslim, think about what Allah has commanded us and what the Prophet has commanded us, which is to use our time wisely. Those things which are going to benefit us in this life as well as the hereafter. That when we die, something that's going to help us in the grave and help us in the hereafter. That's how the Muslim thinks. So it's, it's hard for us to fathom how someone would actually spend their time speaking about the best of mankind. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi. But as Muslims, we have to remember one ayat that this is, this, this is sufficient for us. Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem yuridun li yutfi'u nurullahi bi afwahim wallah mutimmu nurihi wallah kari al kafirun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, already dealing with this, these characters and all these uh, slanders and attacks on Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says they want to put out the nur of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will complete the nur even if the disbelievers hate it. Don't we see this witness? Every time, every news article, every uh, um, thing we see on the, the, the internet, every article that comes out, everything in the newspaper, everything that comes on the news channels, whether it be CNN, Fox News, Jazeera, this and that, speaks ill about Islam. Tries to, if a Muslim gets on a plane, they've characterized him as a terrorist. If a Muslim drinks coffee, they've, they've made it, him a new type of coffee bomber. Uh, if a Muslim uh, you know, wears Hanes underwear, he's now the Hanes underwear bomber. Well, even with all their plots and plans, Allahu Akbar, many people every day they embrace Islam. So why not give up? Accept it.
Islam is spreading like wildfire and will continue to do so. It's not from me. It's not from my brothers and sisters in Islam. And even every time you try to slander or belittle Islam, hundreds of people become Muslim. You call them, you blame, blame us for September 11th when we had nothing to do with it. When more than likely it was an inside job and that's what the evidence, the knowledge-based evidence leads us to believe. I've even changed my hypothesis about this. I used to think it was the Tekfiri people like Bin Laden and stuff, but they weren't capable of this. They might have been pleased with it, but they, those extremists, they were not capable of, of that type of, uh, of operation. It was clear with all the evidence shows us this was more than likely an inside job. And no matter how they try to bring this on the backs of the Muslims, and they try to attack the Muslims every time they want to make a Muslim government, a government that worships Allah. What's wrong with a God-based government? Every time they try to belittle Islam, Allah brings more people to Islam. So we ask that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by His divine names and attributes, makes us a part of the reason Islam spreads to every household, and that everyone has the beautiful chance to go to paradise. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.